dotted line. Thanks for the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, blue, never give up. You represent America. I've been praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. I Liberty's kids. The peace died on the greens of Lexington and Concord. It was murdered again at Bunker Hill. There is no peace in the hearts and minds of the countless thousands who have been forced to swallow the vile brew of British tyranny. If you insist on war, you shall have it. Massachusetts is free to fight England until the moon falls into the sea, but she will fight alone. May, 1775. Dearest mother, Dr. Franklin continues to dazzle me. In these troubled times, when so many people are nervous, or angry, or frightened, Dr. Franklin's resolve is reassuring. <gasps> Good morning. Gather round. We have a busy week ahead of us, and I have a special mission for each of you. The delegates are arriving for the Second Continental Congress. Great! The Gazette will cover Congress from gavel to gavel. I won't miss a thing. Perhaps not, but you missed everything else. Not yet, James. Henri, the delegates will need fresh water. Keep the buckets filled. <laughs> I've been thinking, Dr. Franklin. How about a story on our own delegate, Mr. Dickinson? Hold your horses, James. Sarah, I want you and Moses to greet Colonel George Washington when he arrives from Virginia. Assist <gasps> him in whatever he may need. This Colonel Washington must be important? During the French and Indian War, he saved many lives. I expect big things from him in Congress. I'll get my shawl. That leaves me. What do you have in mind, sir? Maybe I could talk to this Colonel Washington? No, James. No journalist will be allowed in the hall. No journalists, but... The delegates are here to deal with life and death matters. They'll need to voice their opinions freely, privately. Then what in the world am I supposed to do? Someone has to look after the delegates' horses. Horses? <laughs> You may need a bigger broom. You may need a shovel. I can't believe my luck. The biggest story in the world is right here in Philadelphia, and I'm stuck babysitting a bunch of dumb horses. Look, that's John Adams. John Adams? I thought his name was Sam Adams. That's his cousin. John Adams is the smartest lawyer in New England. Let's find out what he's up to. A leader is what we need. What about these? I'm sure Mr. Adams and the others are thirsty after their long journeys. Now get going. Hey! I'm going to nominate Colonel Washington. He's the perfect man to head the new Continental Army. Why not your own Mr. Hancock? I know he has designs on the top job. Impossible. Washington is the only hero we have. The only man the whole country will support. Will New England accept a Virginian? A southern man is exactly what we need. Otherwise, the revolution will remain New England's war. Excuse me, moi. Excuse me. Ben, who is this? A French small fry. Henri, go, go! <laughs> Pardon. Sorry. Hold your horses, lad. James is supposed to hold the horses. I'm the water boy. Come on, Henri. I have to find out what's happening. That bell means Congress is about to start. Oh, but Ben Franklin said no journalists. Am I to understand that you're a journalist, young sir? James Hiller, Pennsylvania Gazette. It's a pleasure to meet a fellow newspaper man. You're a newspaper man, too? Paul Wentworth's the name. I understand your little friend here has a ticket into the hall. Ticket? I've got a bucket into the hall. Two of them. And I've got a pocket full of coins for every scrap of news you bring out with your empty buckets. Coins? I'm all ears. Wait a second. Dr. Franklin said we can't print anything until after Congress is over. And Dr. Franklin is right. We wouldn't want to do anything to hurt the cause. Exactly. However, James, someday it will be up to newspaper men like us to tell the people what went on. 
And we can't do that without facts, can we? No, we can't. Facts are everything. If you want to make it in this business, you have to go where the action is. Are you game, James? How many coins are we talking about? Quiet, Henri. This is between a couple of newspaper men. Isn't that right, Paul? That's a fact, James. That's a fact. Pardon me, I'm a stranger to your fair city. Is this where Colonel Washington is staying? Yes, sir, but he's just now arrived. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> Such poor workmanship on this coach! It's an outrage. Allow me to be of service, Colonel. My name is Moses. Who is your master, Moses? I'm a freed man, sir, in the employ of Dr. Benjamin Franklin. I'll have your coach fixed good as new. Apparently, our English cousins have contempt for us. They've turned the colonies into a dumping ground for all the shoddy goods they themselves would not have. Moses will fix it, sir. He's very talented. And who are you, young lady? Sarah Phillips, my lordship. That isn't necessary, Miss Phillips. I'm not a lord. I'm just a citizen like anyone else. I beg your pardon, your lord. Colonel Washington. Dr. Franklin has sent us to assist you. Excellent. I look forward to seeing the good doctor again. Moses, the future is in the hands of men such as yourself. Homegrown craftsmen. The job is yours. It will be an honor, sir. The honor is mine. <laughs> recognizes the delegate from Pennsylvania Colony, Mr. Dickinson. Gentlemen, hear me clearly. There are still those of us who believe in a peaceful resolve to this conflict. We are brothers, England and America. Surely there is another course short of all-out war. The peace died on the greens of Lexington and Concord. It was murdered again at Bunker Hill. There is no peace in the hearts and minds of the countless thousands who have been forced to swallow the vile brew of British tyranny. Mr. Adams, you spit fire well, but the king's guns spit lead. You will lead us down the path to ruin. And you, sir, will lead us down the path to slavery. We can't win a war with him. If you insist on war, you shall have it. But it will be New England's war, Mr. Adams. Massachusetts is free to fight England until the moon falls into the sea, but she will fight alone. Gentlemen, order! The chair recognizes the distinguished gentleman from Philadelphia, Dr. Benjamin Franklin. Friends, I remind you that we lack not in great talkers, but great doers. I find myself in agreement with Mr. Adams. War is upon us, like it or not. Our great comfort is that we honestly and faithfully did everything in our power to prevent it. But war is here on our doorstep, whether our doorstep be in Boston or Baltimore. Forgive me, my voice grows hoarse. Cold water, Dr. Franklin? Notebook? Pencil, please. Not my pencil, please. I hate to nag you, but... I know, I know, horses. Mr. Hiller, what have you learned? I learned that when Ben Franklin says no journalists, he means no journalists. He took my notebook and my pencil. Going away, coming through. What's ah! the hurry, young man? Ah! Sam Adams just kicked the bucket. Sam Adams is dead? Hey, no, he kicked my bucket, spilled water everywhere. Oh, what a mess. I can't believe this. I'm stuck out here while the story of the century is in there. It is a conundrum, isn't it? Conundrum? A problem. Forgive me, you're new to the newspaper game, but don't feel bad. Someday, when you're a real newspaper man, you'll know big words like conundrum. I am too a real newspaper man. Indeed. But do you have the fire in the belly to do whatever it takes to get the story? 
My belly's on fire. You tell me what facts you want, Mr. Wentworth, and I'll get them. Good. Excellent. Let's start with what they're up to in there. Is Congress going to raise an army? Who will lead the army? The facts, James. We must have the facts. I'm on it. Who, what, why, where, when, and how? Have you got a pencil? Much obliged. Here goes. Hm. You'd think a congressman wouldn't be so clumsy. Whoa! <laughs> Fact one. This isn't going to be easy. I must know what's going on in there. Enough of this tomfoolery. We tried it your way, now we do it my way. It certainly is an exciting time to be in Philadelphia. The city is alive with interesting new people. Exciting and dangerous. Mixed among the delegates to the Second Continental Congress are spies. We all have to watch our tongues. Drill, please. Drill, coming right up. <laughs> He's at Mr. Rodney's desk. Who's Rodney? Caesar Rodney. He's the head man in the colony of Delaware. What he says goes. I'm surprised you haven't heard of him. Haven't you written about him in your newspaper? Oh, uh, that's Caesar Rodney, of course. What's happening now? Dr. Franklin has the floor. There are two voices here. One seeks reconciliation with England. The other seeks independence. I address the former. It was Parliament, remember, which has doomed our country to destruction. They have begun to burn our towns and murder our people. Look upon their hands. The fault lies not with Mr. Adams. The fault lies in London. Dr. Franklin has finished speaking. I don't see Henri. Okay, he's back. He's with... Oh, this is good. John Hancock. He's with John Hancock. I don't believe it. Hancock is not only talking to Henri, he's actually writing it down for him. If Congress does not take over the army at Boston soon, it will disintegrate. All hope will be lost. The time has come. We must have a general today. Gentlemen, I think the solution is obvious. John Hancock is my nominee to lead our new national army. Mr. Payne, you flatter me. But we also have a gentleman available of impeccable credentials. A southerner, Colonel Charles Henry Lee of Virginia. Who was born in England and who would be perfectly happy to be there now. The man we are looking for is among us. And he is a southerner from Virginia. I nominate as General of the Colonial Army, Colonel George Washington. I lost Henri. He's so little. He vanished when Colonel Washington stood up to speak. Colonel Washington is speaking. There he is. Look at him go. He must have big news. <laughs> Henri's news, come on! <laughs> Henri? Henri? Excuse me, a boy just ran in here. About this tall? There you are. Where are your notes? I've been watching you. You've been doing great. Watching me? How? With a spyglass. You've got a spyglass? <gasps> Let me see it! James, wouldn't it be better to discuss this outside? Um, yes, of course. Come on, Henri. Hurry up! <laughs> Stop it! That tickles! If you got everything down on paper, I'll be tickled. What does it say? Is that French? I get coins for this, right? Of course, I'm a man of my word. Okay, voila! Here's what I found out. John Adams wants poultry, pulled poultry. What? Oh, you know, not poultry cut in slices, but pulled from the bone. Sam Adams wants beef, unless it's too well done. Then he wants mutton. <gasps> oh, here's something strange. John Adams won't eat mutton because it's a favorite British food. 
Let me see that. John Hancock, potato soup? He's got a bad tooth. You were getting lunch orders? I can't believe you messed this up. Sam Adams is the one who messed it up. He spilled ink all over my lunch order. Oh, my coins, you will play. What are these? I've never seen coins like this. They're Greek, very old, older than Hercules. The two slits in each coin enabled the ancient Greeks to string them on chains and wear them around their neck for safekeeping. Oh, thanks! If you want any more facts... I'll get them myself. You failed me, both of you. And the only reason I paid you is I'm a man of my word. <laughs> How could you do this to me? Mr. Wentworth is an important newspaper man. He publishes a paper I've never heard of, and you made me look like... like... like a kid! I'm new at this. That's it. I'll get the facts myself and make everything right with Mr. Wentworth. I'll help. I'd like to get more of these Greek coins. <gasps> hey, those are mine. You're back to being a water boy. This is a job for a newspaper man, not a newspaper boy. <laughs> Who's the water boy now? <laughs> James, what are you doing here? Nothing. This whole day has been a big waste. What are you doing here? Delivering Colonel Washington's coach. Where is Henri? I don't care. What's wrong? Hmm. I had a chance to impress an important newspaper publisher from New Hampshire, Mr. Wentworth, but I came up empty. Wentworth? I don't know any Wentworth who publishes a paper in New Hampshire. Well, he is who he says he is. He even paid us. He's a man of his word. See for yourself. Those aren't coins, silly. They're buttons. Buttons? I've sewed buttons like those in my father's uniforms. These buttons were minted three years ago by King George to decorate the coats of gentlemen invited to the king's birthday party. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Whoever your Mr. Wentworth is, he must be a close friend of King George. I have an idea. Quick, a pencil. My presence here will stifle free discussion. Since my appointment is the issue at hand, I will retire to allow you to speak your minds. Good evening. I received your note at my boarding house. You have facts? I interviewed the delegates, every single one of them. It took me all night to track them down. It's all there. The size of the new National Army, what General Hancock plans to do to drive the Redcoats out of Boston, it's the biggest story of the year. I told you I'd get the facts, and I'm a man of my word. I must go. I have to write my story and get it back to my paper. You're a first-rate newspaper man, James Hiller. Well done. And you're a rotten spy. If my guess is right, Mr. Wentworth is reporting to someone. The question is, who? Look! A boat! Eight men could fit in this. We need to be careful. Redcoats! I want to get closer! I'll go with you. Henri, take Moses' tool pouch. We'll meet back on the road. Hancock will be the general of the Colonial Army. John Hancock. The rumor is it's Washington. The rumor is wrong. They put the Washington story out to mislead us. Hancock will lead the rebel army, and his plans call for a march on Rhode Island. You trust your source? A gullible child. He spilled the beans. A stupid boy. Typical colonial. Grand ideas. No schooling. Easily duped. Excellent. Let's move out. Sarah! Sarah! I'm here. That was frightfully awkward for a while, wasn't it? I was a fool. I wanted so badly to be a big-shot journalist, I almost gave away secrets to the enemy. But you outsmarted them. You're British. How does that make you feel? If Colonel Washington is announced as General of the Army tomorrow, word will get to the British soon enough. And that man who deceived you and Henri will look like a fool. I can live with that. Look! 
What's happening? Fire leak! Fire leak! No! I'm wearing silk garments! My suit will be ruined! Henri! Great job! You know, I don't ask you for one moment to surrender your hope for a peaceful resolve to these problems. Thank you. I do pray for that. The only hope the colonies have to avoid all-out war is in the strength of our army and the strength of our resolve. I like General Washington. I hope the great men of this Congress work as hard to find peace as General Washington does to prepare the army for war. That will depend on Parliament. You know, Sarah, if things get too uncomfortable, we will find a way to get you back home. Thank you, Dr. Franklin. Come on! You're late! And on the issue of General of the Continental Army, we call upon George Washington. I accept this momentous duty because this Congress desires it. I beg it be remembered by every gentleman in this room that I this day declare with utmost sincerity I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Dear Mother, this is the first time I have felt that I am, in fact, living events which will be remembered by other generations. I remain with a confused heart. I pray for peace, but fear we are heading towards war.